with your host, Judy Sleed. Special guest, Richard Rosenthal. Underwritten by Windmill Village, Gurney's Inn, and Paul Brennan. Now here's Judy, Judy, Judy. Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to The Plays The Thing. And I have a dear old friend who's sitting with me. He's going to be with us for the next 30 minutes and chat about some very interesting things. Richard Rosenthal. Hi, Richard. How are you? Hello, Judy. And, and what are these interesting things? Well, <laughs> you are very uh, talented in uh, many subjects. You're uh, interested in, and you are. You also have a TV show, which uh, I see sometimes. How often do you do it? Oh, I, I suppose I do 15 or 20 a year now. I used to do more. Yeah. Oh, that's quite a lot. How yeah. long is the show? How old is it? How long? It's a half hour like yours. A half hour. Yeah. And you do it here at LTV? I do it right here in this studio. In this very room? Yeah, absolutely. In this very room, in this very chair. Oh, wow. Well, then you probably feel very comfortable doing this. Oh, yeah. But you are at the other end now, because you're the one who's doing the interviewing on your show. Yeah, I'm under your control, Judy. <laughs> yes, don't, I like Don't take that. advantage of me. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And uh, you talk mostly about politics? Oh, I guess so. Uh, I, I like to give um, alternative views and a, a chance to be expressed, you know, on, on odd political parties, the Socialist Workers Party, the Right to Life Party, the, you know, the, the various groups that don't get on TV very much, and I like to do that. And I was disabilities officer of the town for a number of years, so I have disabilities-related themes. And it's just, just something that I hope is interesting. I, I like to be at Well, home. of course, people like to be heard. And like you said, mm. most a lot of people cannot be heard or being seen. And that's what I do here mostly. Oh, I have great. people on who are, don't get on TV. Right. And views that don't get on TV. Even more important. Oh, views. Oh, yeah. well, yeah, well, we don't uh, touch on any uh, dangerous subject. <laughs> well, what's a dangerous subject? <laughs> Tell me. Well, uh, uh, politics, is that religion, and what's the third one? There was Sex. A... Oh, yes. That's How could I forget about that? It's been you don't so touch long. on politics. <laughs> you don't touch on politics, religion, or sex? Right. Oh, well, what do we talk about? You know, that doesn't leave anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> well, you're a bad boy. I know that. That's why I wanted to uh, come. Um, you and I flirt an awful lot. <laughs> but you had a lot of fun. And uh, the last time I saw you on your show, you had uh, a chiropractor on the show. It's very interesting because uh, last, uh, last year I asked him, exactly a year ago, I asked him to come on my show. Now, how come you were able to persuade him to go on your show and he didn't come on mine? Well, I, I, the, the theme of the program didn't have anything to do with his being a chiropractor. It had to do with the cost of living in East Hampton and how people who really make a contribution to the community, he's a chiropractor, his wife's a school teacher, a fifth grade school teacher, and as they figure it out, without lavish living, they need $150,000 a year to survive in East Hampton because the schools don't pay that much more if she gets a job. So uh, that, that's why he agreed to come on. Uh, and I think it's something that's really worth discussing, the way prices are in East Hampton. And, and it's just going crazy now. It's always been difficult, but now it's going crazy. And not just in housing. You know, I mean, you, 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 go, you go to the, the supermarket, and uh, King Cullen wants $1.19 a pound for Spanish onions. That's the supermarket, you know. I mean, yeah, it, the head of lettuce is about a dollar and a half. And the and Waldbaum's for years has had a sign special baked potatoes, ninety nine cents a pound. 
you know, and, and they've got cracks in them like any other respectable bake, baking <laughs> potato from Idaho, you know, class B or class C. So, um, you know, I, I, I wanted them to come on and tell their story and, and perhaps get the word out that the, it's not impossible for the town or the county to do a little bit about this. Right, but I was just listening. You said the potatoes from Idaho. Why would we bring in potatoes from Idaho when we could we grow them here? They're baking potatoes. The Idaho baking potatoes. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're not all from Idaho, but that's what they're called. Idaho baking potatoes. Uh huh. So we don't grow baking potatoes here. I I, I assume we do, but <laughs> that's just the name. It's like you know. I know. I have to ask. Like Cal like Cal weather. like California daisies aren't all from California. Oh, you know, the same kind I of thing. See. Yeah, I see. but I, I kind of like the town to do a shopping list and publicize the different prices, or through a consumer's affairs person, you know, like they did in New York City and a Republican administration back back in the '60s. They do comparison shopping in the supermarkets, that kind of thing. So that's why that's a long story, but that's why I asked David Hartstein yeah, that and his wife so to come on. Uh, a yeah. good income by doing comparison shopping. That's a yeah, job. yeah, yeah. And I'm, there are there are a lot of seniors that are ready to go. I'm sure a lot of people in the in the senior center who do an excellent job of that. So. Oh, they doing comparison shopping? Well, they do it in their own lives. Yeah. They, they oh have, yeah, of they course. They have, they have to. Yeah. Right. And uh, well, I, when I asked, uh, what was his David? That's his name, David. Uh, David Hartstein. Hartstein. When I, because I went to him also, and when my son was here last year, he yeah. went to him. So that's when I asked him to come on my show. But I was referring to, I was trying to persuade him to act or do something act? in the, the theater. So no wonder he didn't want to. But he's good looking enough to be in the theater. He's good. He is good looking. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I thought uh, I thought that I heard someplace that he's interested, <clears throat> and I wanted him to uh, come. And, <coughs> excuse me. To come and read for a play, and I wanted him to talk about it here, but <laughs> he wasn't ready. <laughs> he didn't do any acting. I wish I had a cough. <coughs> excuse me, Judy. That's okay. Are you okay? <laughs> You know, I cough a lot, and I always carry uh, cough drops with me. And uh, right now, mm. I, I don't know where it is. Maybe I have one. I can't leave the show to hunt for my cough drops. Look, I, got, have. I have a cough yeah. drop, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and you know, the, the theme here is the play is the thing. You know that line from, uh, you know where it comes from? No, but I've heard it. Shakespeare. Right, okay. So, my usual question is, where did you act? <laughs> I've never done it. You've never? You no, I've never done it. missing something. I bet I am. My father was an actor, but I've never done it. Really? What kind? Oh, in college, and he was a singer. He was a baritone. Had a, had, had a nice voice. I sing, but it's awful. <laughs> I have a voice, but it's terrible. Oh, you sing in the shower. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and I sing to the birds, and they all fly away. <laughs> um, and uh, do you write? I know you've been you've been writing certain things. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what it is? It's not a good time to, to talk about it. It's a novel. You're writing a novel. Yeah, I've just about finished it. Yeah. You're kidding! How long did it take you? Three years. Well, I've been writing a novel for the past thirty years. <laughs> That's easy to do. <laughs> yeah, keep. Oh, so yeah, why, can, why don't you want to talk about it? Oh, it's just not a good time for me to talk much about it. Except it's, it's set in a place called East Cog, which is a, a very wealthy exurb from New York City, and there are a lot of billionaires in it, and a lot of low-income seniors in it. Oh, so it's like. And uh, yeah, so it it might. Some people might think it's a little bit like East Hampton. Probably is. Mm. There's a lot of places like East Hampton mm. where they have very, very wealthy and very, very poor. Mm. So. Uh, and I hope it's funny. Well, okay. <laughs> it could be funny. Yeah. <laughs> 
while you're sitting there and eating an Idaho potato, and over there on the other table, somebody's eating oysters. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a publisher? No. No, I'm, so, I'm not dealing with that right now. I'm just finishing the, the story, and then I'll worry about the publisher. Well, that's a great worry, a big worry. Oh, oh, sure, it's a big worry, but if I worry about that now, I won't do the book. I won't finish the book. That's right. So, so far, you So, I'm just, just pushing it aside. So far, you just feel that you're doing this for yourself, mm -hmm. which is the best way. I agree. Because I'm, I have written a lot of things, and I want to write some more, but I'm... I've read some of your things, and they're lovely. Thank you. No, they are. They really are. Well, when you find a publisher, you could send you know, tell me about it. <laughs> okay. But what I was going to say is that now, when I'm trying to write, I always worry, well, who cares? And I don't write it, which is a bad attitude. Yeah, yeah, it's too bad. I'm sure your friends care. And that's a place to start. Yes, I've been, uh, hmm. well, the novel I was telling you that I've been writing for 30 years, I. I just abandoned that because that was like oh. all fiction, and uh, it, parts of it was really good. But lately, I've been, for the past 10 to 15 years, I've been trying to write my memoirs. Oh, I got to <laughs> see that. <laughs> oh, yeah. And somehow, you know, I started to write it so many times because I always started off from a different angle and I could never make up my mind which angle is the best. So that's the ex one of the excuses I give myself, not doing it. <laughs> yeah, but it sounds to me you have done it. Yes, so, yeah. yes, and if somebody would mm. really in give me an incentive to do it, I probably would. Yeah, it's hard doing it alone. It, it's a, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you can't do other things. You have to, you have to become obsessive. Right. When yeah, I was you can't younger, just you know. when I was younger, I used to have more, a, not, a lot of enthusiasm about a lot of things, but now I sort of uh, slacked off. You don't Do you seem to be slacking off to me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think does does uh, the years as they pile up does it hinder you in any way? There's a. The, the years that they pile up, do they hinder you in any way? Well, I, I mean, things start happening that, that do, you know, that take away a certain mobility and energy. You know, little things are happening. That's, that's what's happening with me. I mean, I don't think anybody's interested in hearing it, you know. I have, <laughs> I have, I have, I have a lot of the stuff an 80-year-old man has. Um, so, yeah. Did you say 80? Mm -hmm. You're not 80. Yep, I'm 80. My goodness. Well, not, you don't look and you don't sound, you don't act. You're, so. not, you're not interested in me anymore, Judy, now <laughs> yes, that you know I'm, I'm 80. You just oh, right. God, I, I blew it. Right. I blew it. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is exactly what I'm talking about, that as the years go by, you didn't lose anything. I mean, the little things you lost, they don't count. You still, you still are active and enthusiastic about what you're doing. And that's commendable. That's really, really wonderful. No, thank you. I'm, I'm lucky. What do you mean you're lucky? I'm lucky to have a certain amount of health and energy at, at uh, this stage in my life. I mean, you know, I've been through a war. I've you know, been through life. So I'm, I'm, I consider myself lucky to be 80 and have, be able to do what I can still do. Well, I think uh, health is partially mm. luck and partially hereditary. Mm. But as far as the energy, <clears throat> that comes within you. Nobody gave that to you. That's, uh, I heard a quote yesterday. I always wanted a Hungarian girlfriend. You're Hungarian, aren't you? Yes. Why, yeah. What's so special about Hungarian? Oh, I know. Hungarian women are supposed to be so subtle and clever and glamorous and and, and they have these wonderful voices in the Franz Lehar operas and... Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's me. Mm. <laughs> that's me. Yeah. Although, as I said, I lost some of, some of my enthusiasm. But it could be rekindled, you never know. So what are you doing tonight? 
Well, I'm going to go home and go to sleep. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to get Chinese takeout. Oh, you say you know home. my company. I could bring over some Chinese. <laughs> some Chinese. Well, maybe I should bring over some Hungarian food. Do you like Hungarian food? Oh yeah, paprikash, you know that. Yes. Mm, with with um, lamb or veal, right? Veal. Yeah. Veal, veal and. Paprikash. Oh, oh my goodness, yeah. With yeah. sour cream. And there's something about the, you know, the noodles and the, you know, the way the Hungarians make noodles. Yeah, yeah it's called noodly. Noodly, oh. <laughs> yes. is, it, is that the Hungarian word? Yes. That's too easy. <laughs> yeah, you call it. You know, lately I've been looking at the Hungarian cookbook. I have a Hungarian cookbook which is about this big, but it is so difficult to read because can you imagine how tiny the letters are, and they have recipes how to make noodli and some other Hungarian specialties that I haven't even heard of since I left. And I'm so tempted to make it, but it's so much work. And, uh, oh, <laughs> and it is, yeah. I shy away from it. And, and a lot of the pastries or, or these uh, uh, things that's made with flour they made with yeast, and I'm not used to cooking with yeast. You know what yeast is? Sounds healthier than flour. Probably, well, no, no. It, it, you have to use the flour, but when you put the yeast in, you have to let it rise uh -oh. and put it aside. Oh, and so you got the flour and the yeast. That shows you how much I know. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a lot of, as we used to say, patchkeying around. Did you read our expression? Patchkeying around. Mm -hmm. You did. I've what? <laughs> well, that's a, that's not a. But well, we used to say it in Hungary. Patchkeying. A lot of patchkeying around is like doing a lot of different things. Mm. Oh yeah. I'm so glad it went over like a <laughs> a flated balloon. <laughs> I, I I didn't hear it. My my hearing aid went out. So it's like yeah. Uh, yeah, I like pachkin around. I, you I do? do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what, that's, I thought that was a Hungarian word. Well, all the, Hung the only Hungarian word I know is noodly. <laughs> noodly. <laughs> yeah. You know, my daughter. Oh, and soha. What is soha? That's never, isn't it? Shoha. Shoha. How do you spell S-O-H-A? S-O-H-A. Yeah. Shoha. Shoha. Not show. It's a short one. Shoha. 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 Yeah, that's it. Shoha. Okay. Uh, this reminds me, my daughter took me back to Budapest. Oh, yeah? Like a couple of years ago, and uh, I haven't been there like for 60 some odd years. Oh, must, how exciting, Judy. Yeah. And well, uh, she doesn't speak a word of Hungarian, so it was a little difficult, you know, to get around, and I'm talking. Hungarian to the people and English to her. I used to get so confused with the two languages. I started talking to my daughter in Hungarian and to the people in English. But she learned one one word when uh, the waiter, the restaurant, and the waiter came over and he said, Finchy. Finchy. Do you hear that word? Finnish? No, e e fin Finchy which is a distorted word for uh, phenom, which is delicious. Oh, okay. So he said this is, he was like being cute, finchy, that this, this uh, food is phenom, that, that's, that's a yeah, Hungarian word. For and phenomenal, is that what that means? No, well, yeah, like, like something phenomenal. like that. But the thing is that that's the word. She came, we came home and she, you could say, I speak Hungarian now, Finchy, <laughs> which uh, most Hungarians wouldn't even uh, know the word because it's a distorted expression. Wasn't that a wonderful story? Yeah. Uh, aren't you glad you heard that? No, I am. That's interesting. <laughs> no, no, it is. Words are interesting. Yeah. Are they? Yeah. So what did you do? Did you attempt to write anything else besides this novel? Well, a long time ago, I wrote two books that were published. I wrote a mystery way, way back in 1960 that was published. And That's hard to write. 
I would say. That's what? Hard. It's hard to write a mystery. Yeah, you have to have the whole, you, you should theoretically have the whole thing worked out. And I decided who the murderer was, and by page 90, I had to kill them off because <laughs> I had nowhere to go, so I had to bring in a whole new story. But, it, but you know, it worked. It was published, and it worked. And then I did a, um, a consumer book for people who are hard of hearing and that. And, and that. So, you know, so I've, I've written in the past. Um, so when you had written the mystery, what possessed you to do that? It was just kind of an urge. You know, it's kind of something I wanted to do. You know, that's it, funny. That's yeah. what happened to me when I wrote the play. That I, it was an it was an urge. Now <laughs> that that play was done at Guildhall, is that a reading? Yeah, a yeah. reading. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. where are you from, Richard? San Francisco. And when did you get here? When did I was you... born there? Yes. And when did you come to the Hamptons, and why? <laughs> oh, I, I came to the Hamptons in 1990. That late? Oh, yeah. You didn't hear about us before? <laughs> no, maybe I didn't. I didn't. Maybe I did Maybe I didn't. Maybe it just went on a map like that. So all this time you were in San Francisco? No, I was in New York City after the war. I was in San Francisco. I was born there, and I went into World War II, and then I lived in New York for a number of years. Well, yeah, and where were you during the war? In Europe, Western Europe. France and Belgium and Holland and Germany and England. And you survived. That's wonderful. Did you see a lot of combat? No, I saw some, but not a lot. I came mm -hmm. late. You know, I was young. Mm -hmm. I was 19. But I, so I saw some near the end. But, um, mm -hmm. And I am lucky, sure. Anybody's lucky to survive. You know. So then you went to New York? New York. You went to New York. Well, I, w I, w I went to college in England after the war on the GI Bill of Rights. And then after that, I came to New York. What did you, what was your major? In politics, philosophy, and economics in, uh -huh. in England, yeah. All the things you don't want to talk about on your program. <laughs> <laughs> All the no-no. And, no. <laughs> and uh, in New York, what did you do in New York? Well. Let's see. I was a retail executive, and then I got tired of that, so I became a street vendor, and I sold in the street with my ex-wife. We made things at home and sold them in the street, and we did that for about 15 or 20 years. What did you make? And, oh, uh, handbags. Good, very nice stuff. You, know, you actually tapas. made them? Yeah, we made them in our apartment. By and hand? So, well, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Well, we use sewing machines. She used a yeah. sewing machine, and yeah, I'd, I'd buy the material and run the business, and she'd design and, and put it together. And uh, so we did that for a long time. I was a reporter for a while at Women's Wear Daily. <coughs> you were a reporter at Women's World Daily, the, the paper. Well, the that's like a, a magazine, isn't it? No, it's a day. It was a daily. It still is a daily paper, five days a week. Really? And, and I'd write on business and personalities and fashion and that kind of thing. So I, I, I did various things, yeah. You know. I would say. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, you're not married anymore? Nope. Well, okay, I'm not going to touch on that. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I, I had Nobody gets married anymore, <laughs> Judy. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Once is enough. Hmm. Uh, I had uh, Judith Lieber on this show. You know her? She makes pocketbooks. She's oh, very uh -huh. famous. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she started off just like you when, but her husband, I think, was uh, very instrumental in uh, getting her work out to the public. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. And about, uh, <clears throat> you said you were a reporter. I was married to a uh, columnist. Uh huh. A for newspaper what, man. For what paper? The Long Island Press. And what did he write about? Well, when he had a column, he wrote a tra he had a travel column. Mm hmm. And then we used to travel a lot, all over the, well, mostly the Caribbean islands, and sometimes some parts of Europe. That sounds very hard. Hard? Yeah, that must have been. You must have hated that. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, it was terrible. Mm. But, uh, well, he just wrote about them, and uh, they treated us, of course, like royalty because they wanted him to say something nice about every place. Did he write about Idaho baked potatoes? <laughs> how about what the French do with them? <laughs> One of the funny stories that talking about potatoes is uh, we were on this exotic island and they had like a buffet, very, very elegant, and there was this concoction there. What it is was, an elegant yeah. buffet? Well, they have a lot of different things. And I mean, uh, it's an elegant buffet when they have the parsley sticking up and the, the flowers sprinkled on the, on yeah, the shrimp. Yeah, it, it, was, it was arranged yeah. very uh, mm. tastefully. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that a good explanation? Perfect. Oh, I'm so glad. And one of the concoctions was, it was like a yellow something, and one of our fellow ri travel writers, he was a writer for the New York Daily News, he ate that, and he was savoring it, and he says to the uh, chef there, Monsieur, what is this? No, I said, what is this? And he said, Monsieur, those are mashed potatoes. <laughs> and this was one of my ex-husband's favorite stories. Well, would you believe this, we came to an end. It we was have? so easy chatting with you, and I still couldn't get a date with you. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, that has to, yeah. be, that has to be off camera. <laughs> oh, has to be. Yeah. Well, I want to say goodbye to everybody, and come and see us again. You could see us uh, go wave, wave. Oh, I wave, all right. The, <laughs> and see us, uh, we are in a lot of uh, different uh, areas. We are even in Manhattan, Manhattan Cable. And uh, I want to thank all my underwriters and my crew. And aloha. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Judy. Well, that, that was fun. Love me, love me.